What's up, YouTube? It's Heretic here, and welcome back. I realize it has been a little more than a day. It's actually been an entire week, but today we are finally taking a look at the old Mega Gardevoir deck. And so this is the OHKO variety of Mega Gardevoir with Brilliant Arrow. Some of you guys might remember this from the Primal Clash set when it was released, or its reprint in Generations in the Radiant Collection 2.0. So anyway, what we are looking at here, we have Mega Gardevoir EX, a Fairy-type Mega Evolution with 210 HP, and an attack called Brilliant Arrow, which for one Fairy and two Colorless Energy deals 30 damage, times the amount of Fairy Energy attached to all of your Pokemon. Now there's a few different ways you can run this. You could go the Darkrai or Xerneas Break route and run Giratina and Double Dragon, or you can just go straight on Fairy, which, given that you don't need to flood the board with 10 Energies to make this thing work, I think we're just going to go straight fairy here, but nonetheless, an OHKO potential, just a lot of a lot of damage you can lay down with, with, with this one. So we run a 3-3 of Mega Gardevoir, and then we have four copies of Xerneas with Geomancy. This is our obviously preferred starter, allowing us to, for one fairy energy, choose two of our bench Pokemon and search our deck for a fairy energy and attach it to, for, and attach it to each of those Pokemon. So we pull two, two energy with our attack. Do that, I don't know, two, three times between attachments, max elixirs, and etc. You've got enough damage to start using Brilliant Arrow for usually over 200 damage and just take out whatever you, whatever your opponent has on the board. So that sounds pretty good. Uh, we've got one Hoopa to search our Gardevoirs out early and get us a Shaman, which we also run two copies of for extra draw power. Uh, we get into our items, we've got our couple of our one-ofs, Escape Rope, again, and just really that one of that's just been working out so well in a lot of my lists and i haven't really seen a reason to drop it um in case we don't get the fairy garden set up right away we also have one super rod to get energies back in the mid to late game if we if some stuff gets knocked out maybe one of our guard of wars gets ko'd we lose the three energy we want to be able to get those back and then we have three trainers mail just to kind of speed us along to our trainer cards supporters items etc and we have four max elixirs for additional energy acceleration in addition to, of course, having Xerneas. This can also help if we're in a situation where maybe we go second, we have the opportunity to attack right away, but we don't open with a Xerneas. So we can attach an energy to our active, get Fairy Garden down, and then max elixir onto a Xerneas and still manage to get Geomancy into play and end up with four energies on the first turn. And then we have four Ultra Ball and four VS Seeker. Again, that's pretty much the norm for just about every deck nowadays. Uh, supporters, we got four Sycamore, three N, two Lysander, and one Hex Maniac. It's a little pyramid line I've been working with with some of my lists. Uh, it's pretty solid, at least so far in my testing in a lot of these decks. Uh, this one, of course, fitting the bill. And then for Stadiums, we have a 3-1 split with Fairy Garden which gives us free retreat on all of our Pokemon that have Fairy Energy attached to it. The reason we don't need Floatstone. And then one Parallel City, just in case we do run up against the uh, Mega Rayquaza variant, which could give us a little more trouble than it would if we were running Giratina, or than it would some of the other Mega Evolution decks that can fit multiple Parallels in. And we have three Gardevoir Spirit Links to go with our 3-3 Mega Gardevoir line. One EXP share, this is kind of like a tech, I really wish I could run a second copy of this, because this card is actually very good in decks like this, where we want to maintain our energy on the board. If you can draw into it early game, you can throw it onto something on your bench, even if it's a Shaman or the Hoopa, and then you can just let whatever it's attached to absorb the extra energy so that it stays in play for Gardevoir's attack when your Xerneas or whatever you have active does eventually get knocked out. So, uh... Real nice card to have. Like I said, I wish I could head room for a second copy. And so, overall, just a really good card in decks like this. A uh, card that didn't see a lot of play for a while, I think, because of the popularity of Hypnotoxic Laser when it was around. But right now, it just seems really good here. So, we're going to go ahead and roll with it. And then a whopping 12 Fairy Energy. And that is because with the combination of Geomancy and Max Elixir, you want to have enough energy to make sure that you can hit two energies off Geomancy and the energy off Max Elixir as consistently as possible. Also giving us plenty of energy to, in the event that we prize, you know, two or even three of them, that we can still have enough energy to get an OHKO and still have some left if one of our Gardevoirs gets knocked out. So that's the overall list we're looking at, and we're going to go ahead and take it into a game. 
Okay, so it looks like we see another fairy deck. Maybe there's running Psychic, so maybe the other Mega Gardevoir, maybe yesterday's deck, some kind of variant of that, or maybe we even see a Rainbow Road or a Xerneas Break. I don't know. Or maybe it is the same deck. Oh my... Oh, what is this? What is... What the... What are we... What, what am I looking at? Like, this is... This is vomit material. Okay, so he flips over a Guardi. The other Guardi. Could actually make a pretty good case for running... For why you should play that one and not the one we're playing. Oh, jeez, we are playing a mirror match. Hello. So, he's gonna go pull Hoopa. He discards Shaman and the Mega Guardi. So, we're gonna see... Probably another Shaman come out of the deck. And if he doesn't have one in hand, then maybe two more Gardevoirs. I don't know. Unless he runs like a Xerneas EX or something. Okay, so we just see two Gardevoirs come out. And I'm guessing he's already got another Shaman in his hand since he discarded one. Spirit Link. And, okay, we see a Max Elixir. And these Fairy decks run so many basic energies, you're really never going to whiff. And then we see a setup there. So he's going to draw five cards, and hopefully he doesn't do too much more. I mean, we don't want to fall too far behind and play an end. Come on, play an end. No! I actually wanted you to have a supporter. Why? All right, so we're going to max elixir here, and maybe we can hit the fairy garden and, you know, be not quite as SOL as we currently appear to be. I'm going to play a couple of these things. actually managed to hit them both with three energy in hand. Not bad. And we're going to have to discard those two. So maybe we hit a Super Rod eventually. We do draw pretty darn well off of that Sycamore. So we're going to get a pair of Gardevoirs down. We're going to get another Xerneas down because we're probably going to need it. And we're going to retreat and do a Geomancy here. So we're going to... We got an Energy in hand, so we're just going to accelerate to the two Megas and use up almost the rest of our Fairy Energies in deck. So one more in deck... Five on the board and two in the discard. Six, seven, eight. One in hand is nine. So we got a we got two or three of them chilling out in the prizes, which I'm not gonna lie, that sucks. But we do get a five energy turn, which is pretty nice. Kind of able to jump ahead of the curve there, which is a welcome sight after that terrible looking opening hand we had. Oh, that was bad. Be real nice to be able to come out of that. So we do see an Ultra Ball discarding a VS Seeker and an Escape Rope for maybe a third Shaman? Not entirely sure. He didn't play a Supporter last turn. He goes for the other Mega Guard of War this time, so he's running both of them. So he'd be able to uh, Despair Ray, discarding Hoopa and Shaman, which would knock us out. And I think the big loss there would be these two Fairy Energies on Xerneas. We would be able to N... But I don't think he's going to have a hand bigger than four cards anyway. Instead, he opts to retreat and do a life leap. So didn't so not even having the energy here, I don't even think I want to end in this scenario. Um, I think if nothing else, what we do here is retreat into the Xerneas that doesn't have an energy. And I might even, I'm almost con convinced to just attach and just let him kind of have this one. And we can go ahead and manually mega evolve our Gardevoir with six energy on the board now. And we need to find something, but I really don't want to give him the end there. So he's going to life leap again. And okay, so we hit a trainer's mail. Let's see if we can hit off this. We get a versus seeker. I do believe, yeah, we have the sycamore in the discard pile. So we can verse seeker for the sycamore here. And try to take advantage. If we can get one more energy on the board, we will be golden. Of course, that said, there's only one in the deck, so <laughs> not really sure. Those probably aren't good odds. Uh, I'll go ahead and do another one of these. There we go. There's the super rod. That's what we needed. Get, get a couple of those energy back in the deck where we can actually manage to see them. So we do that, we can get another Mega into play, and we'll do a three card setup here. And maybe we can get another Geomancy, nope. That's not happening. Alright, well I guess we're passing the turn again, but we got a couple of Megas into play, so we've got at least something. Really would have liked to hit the EXP share though too. 
That would have been awfully nice, given this guy. We really don't want to get him Lysandered. Instead, we're going to see Despair Ray here, so... This Xerneas will get knocked out for one prize, but... That's not really... That's kind of small potatoes, I feel like, right now, because... In the grand scheme of things, at least, because we're, uh... You know, no energy on there, so I kind of lost my track of thought there. I'm trying to... For a moment, but... In any case, so we just bring this one up. We got the Garden to Free Retreat. So we'll go Guard of War, Spirit Link there, and we can... I don't mind ending now since he drew a prize. Um, we do hit our energy that we needed, so... Got some stuff going for us there. Um, go ahead and play this Trainer's Mail, see if we can't hit the EXP. Looks like that's not a thing. But we do hit the Lysander, so we can hold on to that for next turn. Go ahead and try to stretch here a little bit. Didn't think we were going to hit that, but worth a try. And then we'll go energy there, and we can retreat and just blow away this Guard of War for 210. And all right, and, and at that point, yeah, at that point, I think we had board control. And so he just goes ahead and scoops it up, watches his one attacker really just kind of go down in flames. So coming back from that hand, yeah, I'm not going to lie. That's a. Uh, that's a pretty good feeling. So I guess that's a quick first one, but that's that's one game in, and we're going to take it for another one and see if we can't make this happen. Okay, all kinds of types. All right. Grass coin, huh? All right, so we won't, So even though we want a Geomancy, I'm going to just go ahead and go first because there's really not a downside to that other than Geomancy, so... And we're going to also, looks like, get the option to Hex Maniac here if we want to on turn one, which is always a very powerful play. He's going to flip over a Clef Key, too. Okay, so maybe like a Vespaquen or, or, or a Rainbow Road. We do have to be careful of Clef Key's ability, which can mess us up pretty good. We're going to Hoopa here. Let's see. Shaman. Just get a couple of regular Guardies out. Nothing too fancy. So we can do that, and then we can go Gardevoir, Gardevoir, Max Elixir. All right, there we go. Get one of those down. Go ahead and attach another one. And I guess we could rope here if we wanted to. Try to clean out our hand a little bit. Not really, not going to put the one with the energies up just yet. And then we're going to Shaman for three. It's really just kind of burning a card, I feel like. And again, we don't really get much, but we have the option. that We could end, we could Sycamore, we could Hex. I'm going to go ahead and play the Hex Maniac here for the first turn since we have quite a few Pokemon on board. I'm not really sweating it too much here. If we had hit one more basic, I would have tried to parallel, maybe knock Shaman and Hoopa off the bench. Fortunately, we're not relying on hitting float stones with this list, as you could just put one energy down. So it is a Vespaquin variant. So he benches an unknown and a combi and passes. That's music to my ears. So we're gonna we're gonna ultra ball away the N and the Mega here. Because we are gonna try to parallel, I think, even if it costs us one more turn. I'm gonna try to get a couple of uh, a couple of unfortunate bench sitters out of here with this Parallel City. So hopefully that one turn setback doesn't hurt us in the long run. We get Hoopa and Shaman off the board and then we Sycamore here. We get a fresh seven. Go ahead and do another Max Elixir and we will bring the energy to a Gardevoir that currently doesn't did not have an energy. And I think that's good for now. Next turn we can go energy up front to the active and Fairy Garden. And then we'll be able to start launching Geomancies, or we can get End. I guess that can happen too. So still needing, so we're gonna just we're gonna need to find another Fairy Energy and a and a Garden. And well, we definitely find the Energy. Not sure about anything else. So he benches another Klefki and another Unknown. Of course, he evolved Vespaquen this turn. We're gonna see an Acrobike here, discarding a Shaman. So he's going to try to make us take six six knockouts here, which Gardevoir doesn't have difficulty knocking out stuff like this as long as they're not wonderlocked. But again, like that's kind of what it is. He can wonderlock that Vespaquin. We can use uh, 
really either one of these attacks, depending on his energy count. If he double colorless, we can actually just use Link Blast to knock him out. Otherwise, we can use Luminous Blade and take the one energy discard. I mean, it's not too big a deal when you have... When you're going up against a deck where all their Pokemon have 90 or 90 HP or less or whatever, I mean, should be able to take advantage of that there. And this Clef Key is not able to use its ability because it's active, although he just drew the Floatstone, so I guess that's moot now. Let's see, another Acrobike. He's going to discard a Sycamore. We're going to see some Farewell Letters here. Goes ahead and sends one unknown, and I'm guessing he's going to go ahead and send the second one. There it goes. Actually kind of surprised he didn't retreat his Clef Key there and try to Wonderlock an Unknown and discard it for an extra. Something that got pointed out to me after my Vespaquin video. And we do see a third Unknown here, so another Farewell Letter. So he's going to slowly start to load up that discard pile, and a big Sycamore here could jump that number in a hurry. So he does attach the double colorless, so we will be able to just Link Blast that Vespaquin if we can get it up to the active, which I guess he's just going to bring it there for us. And he's going to Wonderlock again, so Shaman or Combi here, he's going to Wonderlock the Shaman, and we're going to take a B Revenge for only 50 damage, because he's taking minus 20 due to Parallel. So we're going to see a couple of Spirit Links come out, and let's play this uh, Trainer's Mount, there it is. All right, so we're going to go ahead and give him the uh, extra 20 damage back with the Fairy Garden. And I think I'm just going to go for... Oh, shit. <laughs> that was kind of dumb. Well, <laughs> rip me. Um, yeah, that was pretty That was pretty silly. We could have easily attached here and knocked him out. Because I believe it is... Yeah, it is the amount of energy. I always get that confused with the amount of cards in hand. But it is the amount of energy, so... Anyway, we're, uh, oh, there we go. Just heard from Lisa. We're gonna, or, oh, there we go, just, uh, heard back. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully, uh, finalizing my plans for Philadelphia Regionals. Not until the beginning of November, but if anyone plans on going there, hopefully I will see you. So, eight Pokemon in his discard. So he can do a hundred damage as of now. We see a trainer's mail for an Acrobike. And more stuff flying down. Probably going to have to kiss this Gardevoir goodbye. We do see another Pokemon, so... Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... 2, 5, 9... Okay, so 110. He's 10 away, and so you discard a Pokemon with the Ultra Ball or Search an Unknown. Either one would do the trick. And, okay, so he discards a Klefki and a Zorark there. Goes and grabs a Vespaquen... And that Forest of Giant Plants overrode our Fairy Garden, so we really, really messed up. And I have to hope that he can't quite get to the 210 fast enough. And he does put another Clef Key down as well, which, ugh. Stop Wonderlocking, dude. I mean, yeah, I can, I can go through it, but I kind of like my extra 40 HP, I'm not going to lie. So instead he Wonderlocks the Shaman. Okay. Trying to dodge a Lysander here, and so I guess kind of realizing that we can just Link Blast for a knockout here, which is probably going to end up being the play. We do draw into an N, but he's already got just four, so I think, I, if anything, I might just play the N to try and conserve an energy, but uh, no energies in the discard isn't too big a deal. We don't have any Megas in here. I don't. I mean, yeah, we got one in there. Okay. Um... And he's hitting 130, so I'd like to try to keep him from knocking us out if we can. So, yeah, let's just sick him more. Oh my goodness, are you kidding me? Alright, well, we got one saving grace here with this hand, and that is that we can retreat to the other Gardevoir, at least, and conserve an energy. And we can get a Link Blast here for 100. So that'll at least get us a prize card, but it brings his cap up to 150. So he won't have to do much more to be able to get another knockout. And the fact that we missed the Mega there was, uh, that was pretty big. Because a simple Professor Sycamore here could easily hand him another KO. 
and then he would be down to two prize cards, which, if he gets a double colorless in play this turn, would really suck. So he VS Seekers for an N. Interesting that he went for the N rather than the Sycamore, so he draws four cards off of it. We're going to get five. We do hit the Mega this time. We also hit a VS Seeker and a Max Elixir. Pretty much, actually, all those cards are good to have right now. And whether or not he can hit the knockout here is actually going to be big. Because if he doesn't, we can retreat, Mega Evolve, and try to make some stuff happen. And if he does, hopefully he doesn't have an energy over here, so we can end him down to two. So, alright. We see a special charge here, so he's going to bring an energy back. And then he's going to use Intelligence Gathering on us instead of Bee Revenge. Wow! So he's got to draw some more cards up to his hand. Alright, so that's going to give us a clean shot to knock him out with Link Blast here. We draw Xerneas. So, take a look here. We can probably Mega Evolve one of these things. We just go ahead and one of them's already got... Oh, jeez. I can get three energy to both of them. We got this Max Elixir we can use with the Xerneas in our hand. And, of course, we're going to miss that. So, rip. Um, so we're going to go ahead and Mega Evolve up on the active, I think. 200 HP should be enough. And then we will Trainer's Mail and... Oh, jeez. I'm just going to let that one go and play the VS Seeker here. And we're going to grab the end, bring him back down to four cards since he drew himself up to six. And we do draw an, into another Mega Evolution, so we can get two Megas up and running now. And I think that's probably about all we're going to need to do here before we attack. Get the second Mega Evolution going, and then we can Brilliant Arrow here for, I think it's 210 damage. Whatever it is, it's way more than what we need. So we knock out Vespaquen, and we also have him now in a position where he has no energy on board and needs to hit a double colorless right now in order to pretty much avoid just falling off and losing this game outright. So we'll see if he's able to uh, draw into either a, an energy or maybe like a VS Seeker or a supporter or something that he can use. And so our discard pile is not looking too shabby. We got lots of VS Seekers left if something were to happen here. And he scoops it up instead. Wow. All right, so obviously just no energy no way to get it um he's not one-shotting the mega so he doesn't have a way to get more pokemon in the discard that could definitely become a problem so in any case uh looks like we uh were able to handle that one and despite my boneheaded misplay on the energy attachment uh we are able to go 2-0 with the new the old mega gardevoir and so that's what we're looking at right now pretty good deck and i'll see you guys again next time cheers